Hello everyone, welcome. Come on in, let me know that you are here to join the fun times tonight. Just give a moment or so. I hope you have your popcorn. I've got mine. Hmm. Ooh, this one's kind of like sweet, like a kettle corn. Hey, Michelle. Who's got their popcorn? You ready for a popping good time? Hi, Mary. Hmm. This is that healthy popcorn, but it kind of tastes like kettle corn. I didn't really look at the package. Sorry if I'm talking with my mouth full, but mmm, this is delicious. Who has popcorn? Popcorn tonight. Anybody joining me with their popcorn? Don't run and make it now. You'll miss out on everything. <laughs> so welcome as you're coming in. Be sure to say hello. Let me know that you're here. I hope everyone is doing fine. Okay. I'll have to stop eating my popcorn. <laughs> but it is delicious. It's a popcorn I had gotten in my Misfit Market. Just finished dinner. Ooh, yummy. What'd you have? I had uh, potato puffs and a piece of chicken. And then I had to hurry up up here. I'm uploading a video. I did a video. Hi, Carol. You're here tonight. Yay, I hope you're doing fine. I hope everyone is safe after that horrific day we had yesterday. But boy, what a difference one day makes, really. I mean, today was absolutely beautiful. The windows are open. The fans are going chicken and cauliflower oh it's a chicken night then i had chicken too i feel like i have popcorn kernel stuck so i just did a video on my embroidery machine really fun i'm not going to show you what i made you'll have to go over to my um, facebook page uh sweet bee embroidery to see that so does anyone else have any popcorn for tonight because we're going to have a popping good time Anybody have any idea? I'm going to move my popcorn out of the way because that's kind of rude. Anybody have any, any idea what we're going to be doing tonight? We're going to be having fun tonight. And you know what? I just want to say stuffed peppers, mashed potatoes, peppers from my husband's garden. Oh, wow. I think we're going to head on over to Carol's. I could do like the, the run around. Well, I guess you call it a run around. I can go to like for some uh, stuffed peppers at Carol's and head on over to Mary's for some chicken. And we just make the circuit, right? Okay, so my idea of what I'm doing tonight, I had planned way before everybody else started doing this. I'm just going to say that much. So don't think that I'm copying off of someone. I think they heard my mind and they're going to copy off of me. So anyhow, first off, um, celebration still going on. Um, we're in our final month of that. Um, if don't forget, I posted a teaser of a picture of the tutorials for this month. So if you're on my team, you already got those on our Facebook page. Um, if you're not on my team, well, you can join. We have a great joining offer right now. And you can get a free bundle out of it. So uh, $99, you get $125 of merchandise, a free bundle, paper pumpkin, all your supplies, um, free shipping. It's a great deal. So those of you that are here watching live, I know you all know about it, but I will be posting this on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching the replay on YouTube, be sure to look me up, stampinsucreates.stampinup.net. Um, also, if you place a $50 with each $50 order, that is before shipping and tax. I am doing a giveaway the first Thursday in October of a mini stamp and cut emboss machine and a Stampin' Up! bag to store it in. So that's exciting. And we have a lot of entries so far. Thank you everyone who has been placing orders. I so appreciate it. And... Um, I just want to give out a big thank you for that. So each $50 order, so if you order, you know, $300 worth, you know, look at all the chances you have, you could win. 
Um, and there is a challenge going on with Stampin' Up! And of course, I always love challenges because, you know, they challenge us and then there's always that little carrot they dangle in front of our faces. So it's called a no jar challenge. So we had to decorate a jar and um, we have to continue to share the opportunity of Stampin' Up! with people. They want us to get into the habit of doing that, which of course I do anyhow, but I'm up for a challenge. So we have to ask 10 people or more, but your minimum is 10 to join the Stampin' Up! family. If they say no, then you have to put their name into your no jar, thus the no jar challenge. And if you get 10 no's, and submit all of our, me as a demonstrator, submit the information to Stampin' Up. There's a special um, craft night that I will be invited to. So like, yeah. So let me show you my little jar that I decorated. I went with the snow jar challenge. You get it? Snow. So I decorated my little jar with the uh, free designer series paper, the penguin, Penguin PP. It's the PP paper. Penguin Paradise. Penguin Play Playtime Playmate. <laughs> I'm looking here. I know it's like right in the beginning. Here it is. Penguin Playmates. I use that paper for my snow jar challenge. And inside my snow jar, I have snowballs. So, um, I'm going to be asking everyone, would you like to join my Sweet Bee Stamper team? And I know a couple of my team members are already on here. So I'm going to take the challenge with my snow jar. And because um, I want to go to a free craft night. Yeah. So that's just one of the fun things that Stampin' Up! does with being a demonstrator. We have all these fun little challenges and things. Okay. So I think that that's enough for my um, introduction. But don't forget celebration. Um, while supplies are available, um, when they when things sell out from this whoop from this little mini catalog, you won't be able to get them. So I thought I would work tonight with the delicate dahlia dahlias dahlias dahlias. I've heard them all different ways. Delicate da daily dahlias. <laughs> oh my goodness, dahlias. <laughs> Oh boy, it's been one heck of a day. And this this is a free stamp set, page 14 and 15 in the celebration flyer that you can get with a hundred dollar purchase. And don't forget, if you purchase from me, you will also be qualified for two entries to win the cut and emboss machine, the tutorial, and you'll get of course all the goodies that you want to order along with in order to get this. So this is free with one hundred dollar purchase. There are other items in here that are just $50 purchase. And we have this really fun bundle, counting sheep and the dies. So each is 50. So that's a hundred dollar purchase. Um, and this is soon going to be over with now. Oh, let's not forget this. Ooh, in your words, this is a free host stamp set. So if your order comes to you or gather some people together, $300 or more, you will get this automatically free. Free. Mm-hmm. So it's never a, a bad time to order with Stampin' Up. So anyhow, um, if you need it for more information on that, please reach out to me and let me know. Okay. So um, we're going to have a popping good time. So what does that all mean? Anybody have any hints on that? Any hints? Leave it down in the comments. But we're going to be working with our soft pastels. And we are going to be working with our Versamark. Anybody get it yet? And we're going to have some of our sponge daubers. Do we have any takers yet? And of course, we're going to need some acrylic blocks. Dimensionals? Nope. Nope, not a pop-up card. We're going to learn a technique. It's an oldie, but a goodie. But um, now we're going to use the delicate dahlias stamp set. Now, one thing I want to keep in mind, you should keep in mind, we have refills for all of our ink pads. 
That goes along with our Stazon, Memento, and our Versa marking pad. Now, normally when you get this and you open it up, it is kind of like a white color. This one is very well loved. We also have a reinker, the Versamark reinker. So this is kind of like a spongy pad and it um, does a watermark effect. You can use it for embossing. So make sure when you order any ink pads, you get the refill to go along with it. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, so let's get this going. So Delicate Dahlias, beautiful stamp set, super large, and it has its two-step. I found you can stamp just with this image or just with that image or stamp together. So it has two different flowers, leaves, and it has thank you kindly, oh so happy for you, you inspire me, and sending heartfelt sympathy. Really cute little leaves to go with the little flower, bigger leaves to go with the bigger flower. And when you get these type of stamp sets now that are the photopolymer, they come with the image printed on the inside um, paper that goes in here. So it makes it even nicer. So if you're looking at mine, you're thinking, why do you have, well, it used to be red. Why do you have that little dot on there? Well, what I did is I took a permanent marker. Believe it or not, it was a red one. Permanent marker. This was the one I used. And what I did was I aligned up the stamps because it's supposed to go one on top of the other, but not perfect. Okay, so don't think if you stamp with this, you need to have it perfect. So I figured out which was the top. So it was the image that goes over. And all I did, now this is the flat side. So this is the part that goes on your acrylic, acrylic, yeah, acrylic block. I just took my marker and I marked where the, what I'm going to call the top would be. So that when I'm stamping, I'm going to stamp it, you know, with this being on top. So when I go to do the other one, and I, and I would kind of recommend doing the outline one first and then doing the fill in. What you want to do is you'll be able to stamp this one and on your block, you'll be able to stamp that one right over. So then you'll know that, you know, that this part here with this little thing that kind of goes out, the one part that goes out and the two little ones, that's going to be your top. So does that make sense? And this is a, um, oh, I always forget the name of this type of stamp set. Um, this is a, and it'll come to me, unless you guys can yell it out first, distinctive. This is a distinctive stamp. So when you're using this with your inks, you wanna make sure your ink pad is not too juicy, okay? So you'll go ahead and take your bone folder and kind of scooch over the ink. Just take your bone folder and scooch it over or a plastic spoon or something so that you don't have a whole lot of ink because what's gonna happen if you have a whole lot of ink, you're just gonna get a big mush when you go to stamp. And those are all technical terms. Okay, so we're gonna work with this one. This is the outline one for it's a technique that I'm going to teach you tonight. You may know about it. You may have heard about it. You may have not ever tried it. And we're using all the outline stamps for this technique. Okay, so let's see. Let's put this one and then let's pull our leaves in for this one. Okay. So the other side, this the bold image, we're not going to be using that with this technique. So the poppin' distinctive yay so the poppin technique is poppin pastels who guessed that who already guessed that idea so if you have not yet gotten the, the soft pastels they're really inexpensive they're a great value and you could do a lot of fun techniques with it such as the one that we're going to do tonight so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to bring in my little silicone mat and um I need my paper snips. Let me grab them. I couldn't find my little tool thing. I mean, I have, there's a, an end. I have to search for it more. On the take your pick tool, we all know how this, oh, there it is. Oh, der. Okay, senior moment. Take your pick tool has the piercing, the spatula, and then I couldn't find the other, there's scoring ones, that's the ones I couldn't find. Scoring blade, scoring, not a blade, but kind of like this one, but it's, you know, where you can score your paper. 
So that was the one I couldn't find. So we're going to use our little spatula. Okay, I'll put my snips aside. And we're going to take our little silicone mat. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our pastels. And you can see mine are very well loved. And I'm going to do a little, whoop, do a scraping action. I'm going to make little piles of color. My ceiling fan's on and I can see that it's blowing. <laughs> blowing my chalks around. Okay, so the poppy. And we're going to put some green over here. Ooh, sorry about that. If you're sensitive to that. And this isn't going to hurt your chalks. You could turn it and use the other side. You got four sides, you know. Ooh, that's really shooting out. I may have to turn off my ceiling fan. And then I'm going to do some of the, oh, just a little palette of all the different colors. I'm trying to do this. Let's see. Let's try it this way. I don't want it to do that scraping sound where it's going to kind of drive you all nuts. Okay. Uh, let's get some of the blue. How many of you have these um, new pastels? Remember, we used to have pastels before in the in the past, past pastels, and they were kind of little tiny squares. These are really, I mean, I think they're nine dollars only, and they're definitely something you're going to want to add. So now we have this little bit darker green. I'm going to kind of put that near here. So you probably shouldn't have your ceiling fan going. We might be getting a little messy tonight. All right, and let's do a little purple. Oh boy, that one's up. Let me turn it this way. Anybody's uh, closing your ears yet? Okay, and now my dog will probably be woof, woof, woof. I hear someone tapping. Okay, I'm going to put them aside, and um, I do have hand sanitizer here because that chalk just kind of drives me nuts with my hands. And I have a little rag. I'm just going to wipe them on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get those little smidgies away. All right, so I have a piece of cardstock, and I'm using the basic, basic cardstock. And I, ha I cut it at, um, let me put this one over here six by six just because i wanted to make sure i had like a lot of room okay let me put another little piece of paper under here i'm going to open up my versa mark and i'm going to take my large stamp with versa mark and i'm going to stamp that on here now i know you probably can't see that but i can and I'm going to use my sponge daubers. I have pretty much one for every color. Now the Versamark is going to stay wet for a little bit, so it's going to give you time to play. So I'm going to take my dauber and make sure it's all in. And I want to get a little bit of the yellow. I think I have a hair on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. You can go ahead and rub it a little bit, but I like the tap, tap, tap method. And can you see how that comes alive? It's almost like magic. And I'm going to go into my Poppy Parade. And if Michelle's still watching, Poppy's going, huh? Huh? Her dog's name is Poppy. One of them. And look out. Now I can, again, go ahead and do the roundabout. And here we go. It looks like I'm frozen again. So I'm just going to keep on going because... It looks like on my screen it's frozen, but maybe I'm not. But look at how beautiful that is. Can you see that? Now, if you're worried about all that little bit there, don't worry about that. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it again. So just going to keep going. Okay, and we're back. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm thinking Facebook is like overloaded with people anymore. And then that's what's happening. So I hope you all come back. 
So hang in there if it, this happens, because, you know, if you're a follower of mine, this pretty much happens every time. Okay, so we're just going to keep going. We're going to fill up our background. Let's do another one over here. Are you all still there? Let me know. Leave a comment or do some little hearts or something. Let me know that you you have all returned to me. <laughs> and we're just going to keep. But this is how this is called pop and pastels because it there's nothing there, and as soon as you add those pastels, the color just pops. And I like using the sponge daubers. I think they work really well for this because you can really get it focused and right into the things. Now, if you want to go ahead and add a little more color, go ahead in. I'm going to do some purple, and I'm going to pop in some purple. And kind of blend that in. That might have been dried already, but we'll see. We'll just add a little bit of purple in there. Right over the top. And then if I want to go ahead and add a little more yellow in there, I can go ahead and do that. But look at how pretty that is. That really does pop. So let's go ahead and add, um, let's add some little leaves. And you could just fill up the whole background with this. So let me just flip my leaves. So if you're all there, still let, let if you're all still there, let me know. I'm gonna do a bunch of leaves. And then with the green, I'm gonna do a combination of the lighter green and then dabble into the darker green. You can do these whatever color you want. And just think of all the outline stamps that you already may have in your stash. Um, the one that really comes to mind for me is the sunflower one. Anything that has a nice outline to it. Okay, let me blow that away. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let me know what stamps you have that you think would work out great for this technique. I'm going to do some of these smaller flowers. And I know it's hard for you to see where they're at, but trust me, they are there. And let's go in with a little bit of blue for those. So you can experiment with the colors and kind of make this your own with whatever colors you like. And it really doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes a Versamark pad, some pastels, and um, some sponge, sponge daubers. I'm gonna blow those away. You could go back in, do a little yellow in the center if you want. Blend those colors. Blow those away. And we didn't do any purples yet. So let's go with our bigger stamp again. And we could add some purple. So let me do a little yellow in the center. And some purple. You can do the blue with the purple, just the purple plain, mix and match. And add as much or as little as you want. If you want a lighter color, just go a little lighter with the color. I hope you're all still there. Otherwise, I'm, I'm talking to myself, which I've been known to do. Okay, let's do another bigger flower here. Then I'll show you what to do with it once you're done with this. It's like that. Now, if you want to fill in all this white space, you can go ahead 
and use your dauber and kind of fill in your background with whatever color you want. Or if you like the white space, you can go ahead and leave it. I'm just going to add a little color to that white space so it's not so stark white. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Love it, love it. Anybody still there? <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to get rid of this. I'm going to save this. I'm going to put this over here where it's safe. And my daubers. Now, you may be wondering, so how do you clean your stamp? Because this um, ink is a lot different than our regular ink. I've been using my um, Stampin' Scrub lately, one of my old-time favorites, and Stampin' Mist. I love the chamois, but um, this type of technique, I really like using the Stampin' Scrub with the mist because it really gets down into your stamp and removes all that stickiness that the Versamark leaves behind. So you see it takes all that sticky away. If you find you have a little more stickiness, you can go right with your mist right onto your stamp and scrub it that way. And then these just pop out. If you want to take them out and clean them, they pop right out. You can go ahead and put them, run them under the water in your sink, put them in your uh, dish drainer, and they'll be good to go after that. And this folds up just like so. So doesn't take up a whole lot of room. All right, let me get my lid. Hi, Lori. Stamp and scrub. Oh, yay, people are back. Oh, you're all back. <laughs> this does make a little bit of a mess, FYI. But hey, we're stamping, right? Okay, let me just do a little hand sanitizer because it's almost like when you go to the beach and you know how you get sand stuck between your toes and it's kind of annoying? Well, that's my issue with that. Okay, so now we have this six by six piece. What are we gonna do with it, right? Well, here's a great way. Let me just fix my chair here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put in my paper trimmer. I'm gonna put it at the four mark. It looks like I have a little remnant of something in here. I'm going to trim it at four and then five and a quarter. Okay, so you have these pieces left. Now this piece, you can go ahead and trim that at five and a quarter. And this little piece, I mean, you can use it for something, right? We don't want to throw nothing away. And then this little piece will be great for the inside of your card. So when you trim it like that, I don't have any cardstock available. Oh, well, I do, but I didn't have any cut. Uh, let's see, Poppy is in with the brights. So my brights, hold on, my brights. Poppy's gonna be in the back. Okay. So here's, oh, it's my last sheet. Oh! Gonna have to save this because I think I'm gonna be putting another order in. Okay, so then you could just take your cardstock. And what I like to do is I use my score blade. So get the cutting blade out of the way. Put your paper in at four and a quarter and score, and then turn it five and a half and cut. My blade popped out, hold on a second. There we go. So then we have two pieces. So you can get two cards out of it. So we can fold this in half, use your bone folder Let me 
go into my scrap bin. This is a good way to use up your scraps. How many of you have a scrap bin? Something like this <laughs> that I have to keep organizing because, well, you know what happens. And here's a little scrap. And let's see. Um, I'm looking for a purple. Um, 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 um. I did have them organized, but what happens when we start playing, right? There's a piece there. And maybe, what do you guys think? Yellow, perhaps, uh, crushed curry. There we go. That'll work. All right. So what am I going to do with all this? Well, let's take a look. So we'll be able to make two cards. You probably could make more if you're more thrifty. So look at how pretty this looks on here. Maybe a piece of black would really make that pop. Yeah, let's do that. I saw black in here. Black is always like a staple, like a black dress, right? So let's see. Okay, so this one I'm gonna cut down. Let's see, I wanna cut that side. I always like to look at the side that, you know, maybe I'm not so happy with <laughs> so to cut off. And okay, and then this side here, just cutting off a quarter of an inch. And then my black piece is going to be four by five and a quarter. go ahead and do something like that. Look at how that just pops on there. Woo! Beautiful. Okay, so that could be the layout for that card. We bring in our poppy. You can very easily just keep this one very simple. Let's trim off. Let's do this side. Another quarter of this. And this piece is two inches. So let's do uh, two and a half. We could do a little layering here. Okay, so then this, we want this to be five, five and a quarter. So that should be perfect on there. And this on here, maybe another little quarter of an inch off here. And this is the way when I'm planning, I mean, because I have nothing planned for this. I do have some other cards made and some other things to show you. But as far as making this, this is the process that I go through. Now, if you don't like that, you can always go with, um, let's see how the purple color may look. With the poppy. So there's the purple, or maybe even the uh, mellow, I believe this is mellow moss. Let me trim off some of those smidgies on the end that are kind of yucky. And we're gonna go five and a quarter with this, and then two and a quarter. Okay, so let's see. Let's get this out of the way. So now you can help decide if what color we want, or do we want to incorporate them all with our little design here. So we have our Highland Heather. There's Highland Heather. Would this technique work on black cardstock also? Um, we could try it. We could try it. We'll try it on black. So that looks cool. Or we have the crushed curry. So any of those will work picking up those colors. So Michelle wants to try it on black. Let's see what happens. Okay. So let me get my pastels back in here. Let's see what happens. I haven't done it on black. So that's a very, very good question. Okay. Let's get our big flower. Ink that up. 
Anybody ever tried this on black? Let's see what happens. Okay, see how it makes that tone on tone? When that dries, it'll just make that flower um, stand out. Okay, shocks, where did I put them? I mean, really, where did they go? Where did my little, oh, here's my daubers. I mean, the desk is only so large, really. Okay, so let's see, let's pull some of the yellow. And I'm just into this poppy color, so I'm gonna stick with it. Ooh. Let's see how it looks once we blow away all the dust. Try doing a little bit of rubbing. Now you can also take a um, paper towel or something. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of, let's see. Yeah, see, it kind of um, goes away. Kind of might not be so good on the black. Okay, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, you know, it just doesn't work like the lighter colors. You could use it on other lighter colors. I would definitely say yes for that. But the black, not so much. But good, good try there, good try. Okay, so let's get back to our card. So, my little Dobby Doos. Let's do a little tone on tone with our um, big Dahlia, Dahlia, Dahlia stamp. And let's do one of the other things that this Versamark ink pad is good for. Now my um, ink pad was just um, re-inked, so it is nice and juicy. Can you see how that's just popping? So even if you were on a budget and you couldn't afford all the different ink colors and you like to do this tone on tone look, just get yourself a Versamark ink pad because it's versatile. It can do so many other things. I'm just gonna fill up this background. Only gonna ink up a little bit, because that's all we need. And you can do embossing with it, with embossing powder. You can do the tone on tone, if you get the pastels. And you can see how it's shiny, so it's still wet. So I'm gonna go ahead, Ooh, almost lost my voice. Go ahead and put that aside. So let's bring this back in. And let me get my, um, blue here. We'll just put together a quick card. And I really like it on the black. I really think the black pops. Not so much for doing the technique on the black, but um, it pops for this. Let's get a little ribbon. What do you think of this? Now here's another thought. Ooh, I just had another idea. I wonder if the pastels will color the ribbon. Let's see, what color should I do? Let's, let's do the poppy. I'm bringing them pastels. Oh, I just spilled them all over my table. Oh, okay. We can add a little bit of color. Now I know we've used the markers before, but how about the pastels on the ribbon? Gives it a nice light color. Let me just wipe this up before I end up with a big hot mess. All right, so let's wrap this around. See, it just gives it a very light color. What do you guys think of that? Give me my tape runner. And let's wrap this around. Trim that up. I love this ribbon. This is the black and white um, check ribbon. Is that what they call it? Gingham. Gingham ribbon. Let me put my pin back in there. That can hurt later. Okay. All right. 
We're just going to make a simple, simple card, two simple, simple cards. Just kind of showing you what you can do with it once it's done. Almost dry. I can see that it's not so shiny no more. So I'm still trying to decide what color to use. I'm kind of liking the green, although I'm thinking it looks like Christmas. I'm going to go with the crushed curry. I know you're all yelling, crushed curry, crushed curry, right? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Just a card to say hello. Yeah, that works. Okay, dimensionals. And then I have some samples to share if we're still here. Quick, simple. And then this one, I'm kind of thinking I want something a little bit longer. Thinking of you with sympathy and prayer. Here's a little cute happy birthday. All different colors I did it did these in what is this one miss you hope that you're staying home more well, that's one of the pajama ones how many of you remember that this is a good idea if you like to you know make all these ahead of time put them in a little um, a little a container here's a hooray it's your birthday picking up the green I think I like that we always need birthday cards right okay, a little dimensional on the back Hooray, it's your birthday. And this looks crooked. But I think I'm already stuck down. Yep, okay. That's just going to be crooked. Okay. I know what will make it better. What makes everything better? Uh, where is she? Hello? 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 little bit of Stella. I'm not sure much is coming out of there. Oh yeah, there it is. So everybody will look at the beauty and they won't look at the card is crooked. Okay, so there's just simple quick cards the the technique itself does all the work for you so I wouldn't add too much on the card but colored the ribbon in with the chalks did a little Versamark background some popping pastels pastels and I think I think that's good all right so let me show you a few samples let me just um, clean my hands a little bit here make a little bit of room so how many of you guys do you guys like that you're all still here <laughs> okay so let me show you um, the different looks you can get with just depending on different colors so this is the one that I did tonight here's my the first one that I tried just doing some basic now this little piece here I tried doing it with the bold stamp and that's the look you get you kind of get a blob so definitely use your outline stamps to do this so all over color um, this one I just filled the whole background and doesn't that look like a designer series paper and just filled in where the white spots were just use my dauber to fill it in it just looks like it was designer series paper and then this one I used with the blue and the purple and the green did an all-over kind of blah blah and then um, this one Whatever was left on my palette, I stamped the flower and just went whoosh, 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 whoosh in it and kind of did a little dauber on there and just got it all over. Now, when you cut this up, it'll look really cool. How about some more samples? Let me show you some more samples. So here is one. Let me make sure I have it going the right way. Here is one doing the same type of technique, but working with the gorgeous grape. Thank you. And I love this ribbon. This ribbon is absolutely beautiful. And again, use that black to pop. 
because that the black really makes it pop. And that little scrap piece that was left over, I did a little bit on the inside because we want to use up every single thing. Thank you for being you. And your kindness means more than you can ever imagine. And here was the other piece of that. So I did it, you know, the six by six and I trimmed it out. So this is kind of like what this piece would have been. Having, hoping your day is full of love, laughter, and joy. Thank you ever so much. And then on the inside, it's blank. So those two were from that piece of cardstock. Now what else I did is I just took and just stamped it just with the regular, um, which is the polished pink. Just with polished pink, polished pink ribbon, and again, that black. Um, because it just really stands out with that. Just wanted to say thank you for being you. And um, on the purple side with the gorgeous grape with that same ribbon, I did this one in a hot dog, send, sending happy thoughts. And this one they call the hamburger fold. And this one they call the hot dog because this is the long way. And then this is your normal kind of standard card. But look at how different they look. But they're the same stamp. And then this one I did with the two-step. And I would definitely recommend to mark your stamp, like how I showed you in the beginning. Mark your stamp where they both are what you would consider the top. So then you would know to align them up. Or definitely use your stamp apparatus with this. You know, put one... Um, stamp on one side of the plate and use the other plate for the other one and you know once you align it up then you can continue to to go because it is a little difficult to match up because it's pretty much you know a, a lot alike going around except you have you know a couple little where the little whoop de doos go out <clears throat> so that is what I have to share with you tonight a little bit of poppin pastels. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clean up this mess and go eat my popcorn. So I hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget about $35 order or more with the free tutorial and the free giveaway that I'm doing with each $50 purchase using the host code. You have to use the host code to be entered to win the cut and emboss machine which will be given away the first Thursday in October and I'll be doing that during my live. 